And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Here again, with Twa this time, or Troyes, for all of you who are criticizing me for pronouncing things wrong, let's go Troyes. But anyhow, it's a, uh, it's a dice placing game, so it's on the lines of Kingber Kingsburg, Alien Frontiers, Aliyah Iacta Est. This is going to be one where you're going to roll dice and place them around the board in order to best earn victory points. Now the interesting thing about this one is that you can buy your opponent's dice, so even if you roll poorly, you're going to be able to take your opponent's dice from them, maybe before they have the chance to even use them. That said, why don't we take a look at how this game plays and what's so interesting about it. So here we have the rulebook for Twa, and it's written in three languages. We have English, French, and German. Uh, and essentially it goes through pretty much every scenario you could possibly imagine. Um, there's full detailed descriptions, uh, there's compendiums, and in addition there's extra sheets for how all of the cards that work in the game are, uh, are or how the cards that are in the game are working. Um, it covers all the phases, specific examples, end of game. Uh, actually, you know, reading through this, I was able to read through it and understand the game pretty well on my own without really watching anything or even trying to play it. Um, now I read a lot of rule books, so maybe that's a little bit biased on my part, but all in all, a well-written book. Uh, I can't complain with the writing of the rules here. So here we have the player board for Twa, and along the top you can see a counter. And this actually isn't victory points, this is a counter for influence, which is going to be used and spent in order to modify actions, buy more meeples uh, for placement around the board, um, change your dice, and do all types of general different things. Around the board you can see that there are several different areas for dice. These are buildings. Uh, and these are three are, are called the principal buildings, and they're going to be how you earn dice in the game by placing your workers in these areas. You'll see that they're marked by different dice combinations, and that in this area you place, like for example, if you roll a red one, or use a red one, you can place one of your meeples in this area and kick whoever's there out. In the white building here, you're going to get, you're going to earn white dice, and you'll see that it takes white dice to get into here. A one, three, or a five will place you in this first row, shifting the whole row over and kicking whoever's on the far end out, where a two, four, and a six will put you in the bottom row and do the same thing. The yellow area over here has less spaces and will provide you with yellow dice, uh, which are somewhat uh, like economic type dice. Now these dice, ones and sixes, will push this row over, threes and fives will push this row over, and threes, or sorry, twos and fives will push this row over, and threes and fours will push the third row over. Uh, getting you meeples in there will get you more dice on subsequent turns to roll, uh, which is a good thing. The area on the top here is a cathedral which you're trying to build and put cubes into this region. Uh, for rolling a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, you can put dice in here, uh, always a group of up to 3, and you'll be able to place cubes in these columns, building from the bottom up. Uh, cubes will get you victory points and influence, uh, while not having cubes in each one of these rows at the end of the game will lose you victory points. Around the board you also see several areas for cards. You can see an area of white cards, red cards, and yellow cards, as well as an area for cards at the bottom of the board. Now, the yellow red and uh, white cards are going to be actions that will be revealed throughout the game. Uh, during the first round of the game you'll reveal the first card of each color uh, and it'll be a spot available for doing different actions. So for example the cards up top here, let's reveal all the ones, you can see that this one here costs you six money to place on and you must have a meeple which you can buy for two influence uh, and it's going to give you victory points for placing there. So the first person will get two, the second one. You may then use a group of up to three dice, uh, which you will divide the total value of by three, and that many times for spending an influence you can put cubes onto event cards. Now I haven't gone into event cards yet, but getting cubes onto event cards will essentially earn you points. The card at the top here, same thing, costs you six money, will earn you victory points, and with a group of up to three white dice, with the total value divided by three, you can change one white die at a later point into three yellow dice of the same value. Now this is a great card, because turning one white die into three dice is great at any point. The yellow card for five money will get you two victory points if you're the first person to play there, and with an any group of up to three yellow dice, divided the total value of those dice by three, will allow you to score, or to get money, per yellow die still left in the district. Now, the district is the center region here, in which players will be rolling and placing their dice. You'll see these little gray circles, here, players will place their little uh, player color indicator pieces. 
and after they've rolled their dice, they'll place them all here. Going around in player order, players will have the option to buy dice from other players. Buying dice depends on how the cost depends on how many dice you plan on using during your action. If you're going to use two dice, then each die that you buy costs four money. If you're going to use one die, each die that you buy costs two money, and if you're going to use three dice, each die that you buy costs six money. It doesn't matter how many dice you're buying, only how many dice you're using. At the bottom here you'll see, as I mentioned previously, there are examples of event cards. And there's one event card that's always on the board, and I'm only going to show you this one. Um, but essentially, event cards are things that you can fight, and they're going to come up each turn. Uh, and there'll be either black dice or events that will happen at the bottom of them, and these are always one of the first things to happen on the turn. Black dice represent marauders, or, or attacking people that are going to attack your village, and you have to fight them off or you're going to suffer consequences by losing dice. Each turn, the amount of black dice that are indicated by the cards will be rolled, and the first player will have to kill the first die using one of their dice that's equal value or higher, uh, where red dice always count as double. So, for example, a red two could kill a black four. Uh, you may kill more dice if you want, but if you don't, then you may pass them on to other players. Uh, and you'll earn one influence for each die that you kill, so there is an incentive for doing so. Additionally, these event cards can be killed, as I mentioned previously. You'll see that they have flags on them, which indicate hit points. Uh, so, for example, this, this one here has four hit points. And you can see that using a combination of one to three dice of any color, you may attack this card uh, and... For example, if your total is 12 divided by 3, you may place four of your cubes onto this area. Placing all four cubes would kill it, and you would earn victory points. Whoever has the most cubes would earn two victory points, and whoever has the second most would earn one. If you have all of the cubes on there, you're going to earn both values. That's essentially the concept of the game. Uh, there's one more area, which is uh, kind of an agriculture area, which allows you to turn yellow dice in uh, for money, which I've seen used seldomly, but it does happen. Additionally, each game, the players are going to get one roll card, or in, in a two-player game, they're going to get multiple roll cards. And these roll cards are secret, kept secret from all of the other players. And what these roll cards are going to do are provide additional options for scoring. Now, they don't provide an additional option for scoring just for that player, they provide an additional option for scoring for every player in the game. However, the goal is a secret, so other players are trying to gleam at all times what your potential role may be. You can see that there are rewards for having more influence, uh, 1, 3, and 6, depending on 5, 10, or 15 influence, more money, uh, more cubes in the cathedral, more meeples in the principal buildings, um, more event cards defeated, so when you defeat an event card you get to take it, and if you have the, uh, a certain amount you get additional points, and just for having uh, another one of uh, more meeples, uh, one is for more meeples on the event cards and one is for more meeples in the principal buildings. Uh, so, there's different options of how you can score additional points, and trying to figure out which ones your opponents have, uh, which one you have is try you're trying to complete your own while keeping it a secret from other players, and figuring out which ones they're doing in order to best earn points at the end of the game. All of these cards score only at the end of the game. So here we have an example of the player pieces for one player. Uh, you can see you get a bunch of meeples, and depending on how many players you're going to play with, you're going to start with a different amount of meeples. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, you'll be able to buy more using your influence. So you're always going to have a set amount of meeples unless you purchase more, uh, and you'll want to do so pretty early in the game in order to get on more spaces on the board, as this is a worker placement game. Uh, more guys on the board means more dice, more points, and generally more abilities allowing you to change dice in some way or another. These little cubes, as I pr mentioned previously, are going to be used for building the levels of the cathedral, uh, they're also going to be used to mark things on the board that you may do at a later time, and to mark damage that you've done to the event cards so that you can keep track of who earns points later in the game. These little uh, circle discs here, one is meant for keeping track of your influence, the other one is meant to show which district in the center of the city is yours, marking where you place your dice throughout the game. In addition to player pieces, uh, you get gray pieces, and the gray pieces represent a neutral player in the game, a player that nobody's controlling except for the game itself. Uh, these, pe these meeples will be placed on any empty spaces on the board that aren't currently occupied by one of the players. The cubes are available because sometimes event cards will allow uh, the neutral player to build levels of the cathedral or to damage event cards 
uh, essentially you're removing a spot of availability for the players of the game. Also included in the game are chits for both victory points and money. There's ones, fives, and tens for the money, uh, and there's ones, threes, fives, and tens for the victory points. The money is double-sided, where the victory points actually have a shield on the back to prevent you from being able to see your opponent's amount of victory points, keeping them hidden throughout the game. Lastly in the game, you get several different ty types and colors of dice. You get yellow, red, white, and black dice. Now, yellow, red, and white dice are going to be dice that are used by players, and these are the ones that are earned for having your meeples in the principal buildings. The number of dice you get to roll depends on how many meeples you have in each individual building. Uh, at the beginning of the turns, you'll have to roll these dice. Um, first, you'll have to pay for each type of uh, worker you have. Red, red dice will cost you two money each, white dice will cost you one money each, and the yellow dice will be free. And you're going to pay this out of your income that you get each turn. Uh, you'll then roll your dice and place them in the central area, and players will have the option to buy them from you to use them for the various actions that I showed you previously. Uh, and those actions will change from game to game, so each game you'll be seeing a different grouping of actions coming out at different times, you'll be seeing different events, and you'll be using different dice in order to try and to complete this. So it's a little bit dynamic. The black dice are used solely by the event cards in order to cause bad things to happen to you. They may replace you on the board. They may kick somebody's meeple out of one of the buildings, giving them one less die next turn unless they somehow get it back in. Or they may place a cube in the cathedral and at the beginning of each turn they're going to knock out some of the dice rolled by players, making them unavailable for the turn. Essentially the game revolves all around this. Who rolls what dice? Who can afford to buy them? And who best sees the combinations of dice available on the table as an opportunity to take an action? So I have to admit, I really like this game. Uh, this has quickly become one of my favorite games. I was trying to get my hands on it once the uh, European release came out, and wasn't able to do so until the exact day of the United States release. Now, I still got a European copy of the game, uh, but I didn't get it until just recently. But this has quickly risen to be one of my favorite games, and it's one of the most popular games right now in the gaming community. There's a lot of choices, and it's very dynamic. Uh, with the rolling of the dice and the changing of the cards every game, you have a different selection of cards. Uh, you'll see different events, different possible actions. Everything about the game kind of shifts almost every time. Uh, it's very, very interesting. I can see lots of plays of this getting, getting uh, onto the table. And really, I like it. Now, this is strange for me because I don't like dice. I am not a big fan of dice games, but this one manages it in such a way with allowing you to buy other people's dice that I think it's interesting, it's uh, strategic, and there's not too much of a luck factor included in the dice. If you are a dice lover, you'll love the game. If you're a dice hater, you may like it as well. I would suggest that anybody who's a fan of medium to heavy euros uh, take a look at this game. It's, it's a real gem, and I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah.